Humanity is going through difficult moments like never before. We have lost our loved ones with a glimpse of an eye like never before. Our lives have been affected dramatically like never before. Our relationship with our Creator will never be the same like never before. Our priorities in life are dictated to us like never before. Our freedom is no longer in our hands like never before. And life will never be the same after these difficult moments. Join our live Ramadan show like never before with Hatim Al Abdissalam and engineer Muhammad Farooq on Oman FM, your nation station, every Saturday till Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. to discuss our lives like never before. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and peace and blessings be upon our beloved messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to your program, Never Before. With me, your host, Hatim al-Abdis Salam, and joining me is my dear brother, engineer Muhammad Farooq. Assalamu alaykum, Muhammad. Wa alaikum as How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm really excited about this special Alham- episode. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Mm-hmm. So, Muhammad, today we decided to have an open uh, show and to discuss uh, a very important uh, topic, which is the pearls of wisdom. Mm-hmm. And the pearls of wisdom are not unique only to Muslims, but they are beneficial to whole humanity. Uh, whole humanity. Mm-hmm. And I think never before have we uh, dedicated yes. a show to talk about the pearls of wisdom uh, from the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you all know that uh, the final messenger uh, is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There is no any other messenger that will be coming after him. And uh, the final message and revelation is the Quran, the glorious Quran. Mm -hmm. So all humanity are expected to benefit, to learn, to understand, especially uh, the teachings which are universal, which are beneficial to uh, human beings. And today, inshallah, we will take you through uh, some of uh, these teachings. Uh, first of all, uh, just a short note that all these uh, episodes are uploaded to YouTube daily and then they are posted to Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and look for life as it is. So benefit yourself and benefit others by sharing these. Uh, there's a hadith of Muhammad, peace be upon him. The best of people are those that bring most benefit to the rest of the mankind. Uh, the, this content is uh, curated for both Muslims uh, as well as not yet Muslim brothers and sisters in humanity who might subscribe to another faith or who might have not uh, decided upon any faith as of now. So coming to the show, a uh, little bit of uh, introduction. There are two primary sources of guidance for humanity. One is uh, Quran, that's the verbatim word of our creator God Almighty. Yes. Original being in Arabic, and now the uh, attempts at translations are available in, in different languages. Uh, we can go to Quran.com, that's Q-U-R-A-N.com, and find more on this. And the other one is called Hadith, that is the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, again, we need to understand uh, that the grand or divine source for both messages is the same. Uh, revelation and whatever um, how peace be upon him was told to make part of the Quran he did that and the other revelations uh, which were not part of the Quran uh, came to us what is known as uh, hadith or a hadith if you're looking at uh, more than one so in terms uh, as when it comes to Quran Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him he peace said uh, I leave you with two things as long as you follow these you will never go astray one is Allah's book and the other is the Sunnah of the Prophet that is the uh, uh, Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so this hadith 
It gives us the comfort that the teachings of Quran and Sunnah will never be obsolete and they are applicable to all times and all places. Uh, in other words, one size does fit all. Yes. Uh, next one is <clears throat> where he said that the best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. So nowadays we hear uh, that terminology called knowledge transfer. It's really big in different companies and countries, organizations and all that. So here we are uh, asked to do the same uh, 1400 uh, years ago. Uh, in terms of uh, hadith, Prophet peace be upon him, he said, uh, the best words are the words of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad. Uh, peace be upon peace him. Be upon uh, but the, here we need to understand that we need to have faith on this uh, because if we value this thing the way we should, only then we can benefit uh, out of it. Uh, we'll not be able to drive the real benefit if we look at it as just uh, you know, wise words coming from a man. Yes. So we need to constantly remind ourselves that he was inspired by God Almighty. Uh, he, and it's said in Quran that he doesn't say anything on his own, own but he says what he's asked to say, asked yes. by God Almighty. So especially for Muslims, um, you know, um, many of us today, we have these uh, teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stacked in books in our shelves at home. Mm -hmm. And we don't really ponder on them or reflect them in our daily lives. Yeah. So it is important uh, to take the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and implement them in our lives. There was a lot of effort uh, put by the companions and the and the and the co and the followers of the companions to compile these books uh, and and gather all these uh, prophetic traditions mm -hmm. so that they can reach to us after 1400 years yes so it is worth your time to you know to appreciate this effort by at least looking at one or two or three of these traditions and implementing them in your daily life and today we have uh, chosen uh, a few only uh, a drop yeah from the ocean mm -hmm. where there are more than 40,000 uh, hadith or traditions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or sayings yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we have only chosen a few mm -hmm. uh, and we think uh, these few that we have chosen might be inshallah mm -hmm. uh, beneficials to muslims and the people of the rest of the world exactly and uh, here again uh, we need to understand that these words will help us as individuals and as societies collectively survive and thrive till the end of times. So for those of us who are still waiting for the next shiny object or some people who are still waiting for the, uh, for the last prophet to come and, and rescue them, uh, we uh, humbly request them to study the message of Quran and Sunnah. Like we mentioned before, they have nothing to lose. Yes, we do so many studies of other comparative religions in order to uh, to have a better understanding. So you know, it would be worth their effort, inshallah. Uh, some there are a lot of books of a hadith, like you mentioned, forty thousand plus are compiled. Yes. Um, you know, uh, of course, we have to keep in mind that mm, this was very d uh, demanding, and it can only be called labor of love because in the early days things were. Uh, written, handwritten. handwritten. Yeah, there was yes. no publication or, or, or printing <clears throat> presses. And then now we have the luxury of having them on websites and on the apps. And and, uh, and even Muhammad, uh, in terms of collecting them, mm -hmm. because uh, the companions who narrated this hadith, they are in different uh, parts of the world. And uh, just imagine that... Uh, the compiler of these uh, traditions, mm -hmm. he would go to Al Madin Al Munawwara and get one hadith from there and then move on to Baghdad and then move on to uh, Damascus, you know, to get to, to find these companions who are memorizing these traditions and copy them and, uh, you know, note them down in the book and also record the chain of narrations and, and this is an amazing thing it's yes. really fascinating you know nowadays we talk about blockchain and all these other things yeah. but we need to appreciate uh, and have a better understanding and it of shows the, the authenticity of uh, 
uh, of such uh, traditions mm-hmm. and how they are compiled in such a way they are referred immediately to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So everyone who narrates these uh, these hadith, it will show he got it from where mm-hmm. and the the person got it from who exactly. and until it reaches the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if there is any signs of the narrator being an a, a dishonest person, mm-hmm. a non-righteous, any kind of weakness, yeah. uh, then the hadith is determined to be weak, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of what the hadith is mm-hmm. uh, saying. Exactly. It's a complete science by itself. And <clears throat> the reason we need to be more careful uh, when it comes to uh, studying or gaining knowledge about a hadith from the correct sources and then sharing them is that uh, we see a number of people sharing a hadith on social media where they are not authentic, they are weak, uh, or half of the hadith would be right, and the other half they have picked up from something you know, made up, and they attach it and they forward it. Yes. And most of us being uh, emotionally charged <laughs> when it comes to our deen, we just forward them. So the dangerous part here is that uh, this is a big sin. So we need to verify the source of the hadith before we forward it. So like we are told that Quran is the verbatim word of God and it's memorized by millions and it cannot be changed. So unfortunately, the attack point we see is on the ahadith. So here we'd like to uh, name few of the uh, most popular works when it comes to the book of Ahadith, uh, which is uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawud, Sunan al-Tarmizi, Sunan al-Nasai, Sunan ibn Majah, and Musnad Imam al-Rabiya. Yes. Okay. So we highly recommend that people uh, gain knowledge about Ahadith and not only gain knowledge, but also implement it in their life because we often talk about Quran as the book and Muhammad peace be upon him as the practical implementation of that book. Yes. So we don't want people only to memorize these hadith and uh, yeah. they don't do anything with it. Yeah, know? exactly. I mean, if we're just going to memorize them and parrot these hadith, uh, you know, which is well and good as far as knowledge transfer is concerned. But, you know, they say knowledge is uh, a dormant asset. It becomes an asset when you put it into implementation. Yes, definitely. Okay? So what we would like to do is, uh, uh, as we have discussed before, that there are basically two kind of rights uh, on us yes. for which we are responsible. One is the right of the creator and the other one is the right of the creation. Yes. So before getting into it, we see uh, about, let's say, four different kind of people. Some of them, they are very good when it comes to uh, the rights of the creator. You know, they, they pray on time and, uh, you know, they take care of the other rituals. But when it comes to dealing with human beings, uh, their uh, morals and conduct is very poor. And this is where we want to emphasize today that uh, uh, you should have a balance and your uh, rights towards your creator mm-hmm. should, uh, impl- should, should have a reflection on yes. the rights of the creation. Yeah. So you, you cannot be a devoted uh, believer praying, fasting and uh, doing uh, performing hajj. Mm-hmm. And then on the other hand, you curse people, you cheat transgress, them. you cheat, and you are rude, mm-hmm. and you don't give people their rights. Uh, you don't people. You don't pay people uh, on time, mm-hmm. and you are you know you're just a mean person. Exactly. This this is just a waste of your time. All the those rituals that you're doing, and you know, uh, you should reconsider and, exactly. and and think about it because if your rituals does not reflect in your character then there must be something wrong with your actions. Exactly. There must be something wrong with the way you perform your rituals. You should revise and go back and see what went wrong. Yeah, because uh, I, I agree here, because if doing all those rituals which are supposed to uh, bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as a byproduct of that, it's supposed to make us softer, lenient, tolerant and forgiving and better people and better people towards his creation if that's not happening then there is something wrong in the formula and obviously you know teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are perfect so the problem is with us yes 
Uh, now, in terms of the rights of the creator, we'll just look at one powerful hadith. It's very long, but we'll just concise it. It's called the hadith of Angel Gabriel, peace yes. be upon him. And this is when uh, Angel Gabriel uh, came to Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was sitting with his companions, uh, and he came in the form of a man. Yes. And uh, he asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, what is iman or faith? And uh, Prophet, peace be upon him, replied, faith is to believe in Allah, to believe in his angels and meeting with him, his uh, apostle, and to believe in the day of resurrection. Yes. Okay. And uh, then he further asked him, what is Islam? So Prophet peace be upon him said, to worship Allah alone and none else, to offer salah, which is the prayer, daily prayers, yeah. to pay the compulsory charity, which we discussed 2.5% of the uh, additional uh, amount that you have stored for more than a year and to observe fast during the month of Ramadan. So then Angel Gabriel further asked, what is Ihsan? That is like the next level or perfection. Yes. And Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, replied to worship Allah as if you see him. And if you cannot achieve this state of devotion, then you must consider that Allah is looking at you. So this hadith is very powerful because from here we see the three levels of obedience. Yes. Faith being the first one that starts from your heart. And then Islam, which we talked about rituals and you know things of that nature. And then finally Ihsan, which is something we do to each other as human beings or to the environment or to the other creation, you know, uh, which is mentioned over there. Yes. So uh, th this, <coughs> this is very powerful. Here I would like to mention one, clarify one point, which we often see from uh, coming from our friends who are, are not Muslim yet. Is, uh, let's look at this hadith. It says, adhere to righteousness even though you will not be able to do all acts of virtue. Yes. Okay. Know that the best of your deeds is salah and that no one maintains his ablution except a believer. So here we need to understand that it, perfection is not expected from us. It's the best effort that we do. So being human beings uh, will slip and slide. Yes. And will fall in sin. But alhamdulillah, we've been blessed with the door of repentance. Okay, uh, and we ask for forgiveness to God Almighty. He forgives us and we try our best not to repeat the sin. But if it happens or another sin happens, again, we repent. So some of our friends, they think that Islam is very difficult because once they accept Islam, then they have to be saints. They have to be perfect. Yeah, they have to be perfect. And, and we, we are yet to see uh, Muslims who are perfect. Because exactly. Everybody makes a mistake. Exactly. Exactly. So this <coughs> this is something that that requires uh, clarity. Uh, uh, next, we would like to touch upon the, the character right, the because rights of character yeah, of because creation. because this is uh, yeah exactly the rights of the creation because this is where we see most of the deficit uh, happening in the world and even unfortunately happening among Muslims as well. Yes. Uh, when it comes to Muslim. Uh, dealing with another Muslim or a Muslim dealing with uh, an, another person who might not be a Muslim. And this is very important because it touches the daily uh, interactions between uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, I give an example, Muhammad. Uh, for example, if you want to go and buy a second a second hand car, Ooh, and scary. then uh, <laughs> you go to the owner of the car and he'll say, you know, this car is almost new, the tires are new, uh, it's a, a woman has been driving this car and it has uh, uh, a history uh, in the showroom that it has been serviced uh, all uh, by the dealer and it has never had accident. And then the moment uh, you go and check the car, you find lots of dents and it's been hit by a, a, another car and it has a bad history and it's broken. Uh, and this is not only in cars, in, ev in everything. everything else yeah. we do. I'm not generalizing here. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that this is the case with everybody. But uh, this is part of faith. Yeah. If you are not honest in these simple things, then you cannot be honest in the big things. Exactly. I agree with you, Hatim. And we're going to touch briefly upon that, that whatever we do, our intention should be correct and we should have sincerity. So for as an example, I can smile at you yes. because I'm expecting something in return or I can say a nice word to you, but you will really get to know me when you do some kind of a contract with me. Yes. Either a partnership, buying and selling, uh, I don't know, marriage, whatever, whatever, right? That is when you get to know the real person. So some of the people, they're very good at disguising and being very polite and nice. And, you know, so there are different ways of deception. Either they will hide the faults 
or not tell you the faults, which is the same thing. Or they will focus more on the positive, okay? Or they will just lie to you. Or sometimes even uh, not uh, sticking to their word. Mm -hmm. Because when you give your word to a person, when you give a promise to a person, you are bound by that word. Even if know? it results in a loss, e yes. Even if you don't have a contract between, two, between, between the two of you, mm -hmm. but you have given your word. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, like to share a story of one of our relatives. He wanted to buy a land. Mm -hmm. So the owner of the land said the land is going to be for 40,000 riyals. So my relative paid 1,000 in advance and he told him, I need a month to sort my finances with the bank. So after two weeks, the owner called him up and he said, you know what? The price of the land has increased now to 60,000. And uh, you either give me the money, 60,000, or uh, I sell it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And my relative said, but we agreed on 40,000 and uh, you agreed to give me one month to sort out my, uh, my finances. Mm -hmm. He said, no, th the deal has changed now. So my relative said, okay, if that is the case, then uh, I will ask my money back my, as thousand, a refund, yeah. the thousand real, and you can go ahead and sell it to anyone you like. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I'm not going to give you back that money. That's non-refundable. Yeah. Non-refundable, you know. So these type of dealings, are, you know, uh, are not to be forgiven mm -hmm. because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you pray or fast or, or do hajj and umrah, if you take the rights of other people, mm -hmm. then you are accountable, exactly. whether it is in this world or in the hereafter. Exactly. And the, that reminds me of a hadith where Prophet, peace be upon him, he asked the companions that who is a poor person? And they said the one who doesn't have any money, meaning no dharam or dinar. Yes, and he said the poor of my nation are the one who will come on the day of judgment with lots of good deeds, mm -hmm. prayers and fasting and charity and all that. But in the world, in this world, they would have abused somebody or eaten up somebody's property, like you mentioned, transgressed, mm -hmm. uh, denied somebody their right, which falls under cruelty. And on the Day of Judgment, uh, their good deeds will be given Did to the other person. Yes. And if that doesn't it, uh, balances uh, the account, then this person will start inheriting the bad deeds of the other person whom he abused in this world, thinking that this, you know, I'm very good, I pray and all that, so I have the right to abuse anybody. Mm. So, and he would be the real poor person, meaning he will be thrown into hell. SubhanAllah. Okay. So we really need to think about the hereafter if we want to have our uh, dealings in order. And we see most of the enmity problems, uh, court cases uh, are because of financial uh, dealings. Okay. So here we're going to focus more on the rights of the creation. And uh, if we look at the character, Muhammad peace be upon him, he said, I have been sent to perfect good character. Okay. And then he said, the one who does not behave gently is considered to have been deprived of all their good deeds. Yes. It's similar to the other hadith that we touched upon. And uh, another one, he said, the best of you in Islam are those who are most excellent in character as long as you deeply understand the religion. At another place, he said, the best of the believers is the most excellent of them in character. Again, yet at another place, he said, the best thing mankind has been given is excellent character. You see, the more a topic is important, the more a variety of hadith we'll find about that topic. Uh, another one is, uh, peace be upon him, he said, there are two characteristics that a believer does not have. Mm -hmm. First, meanness, and second, bad morals. SubhanAllah. Okay. So here he has uh, emphasized and re-emphasized and re-emphasized about how important the character is. Yeah. And this brings us to the intentions of believers, uh, mm -hmm. Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, one of the first uh, uh, traditions that we are taught as kids in school mm -hmm. is this very important tradition uh, that the Prophet Wasallam so says, uh, Verily, deeds are only with intentions. Mm -hmm. Verily, every person will have only what they intended. Correct. Whoever immigrated to Allah and his messenger, his immigration is for Allah and his messenger. Mm -hmm. And whoever immigrated 
to get something in the world or to marry a woman, his immigration is for that to which he immigrated. Correct. So this means that, you know, no matter what you do, it's all down to your intention. Exactly. So I give you an example to become so that we are practical and you understand what I say. Mm-hmm. So if you want to pay out charity, for example, and you're paying it so that people can see and recognize that, oh, and say that, oh, mashallah, Hatim is a generous person mm-hmm. and you want that status, you know, mm-hmm. that reputation, then your intention is not pure. Mm-hmm. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You're not doing it out of goodness You're not doing it because you sincerely want To extend a helping hand mm-hmm. to your brother You're doing it for reputation You're doing it for people to you say seek this attention, and that yeah. Yeah. Even for, 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 for example uh, The people who are going for battle mm-hmm. yeah. You're not going for battle for, uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For justice, for peace mm-hmm. You're going to the battle so that they say Oh mashallah He's a brave person. To win medals. Yeah. So if that is your intention, Mm -hmm. then you're wasting your time. Exactly. And this is applicable in everything else that you do in your life. Agreed. Uh, See, this is a very nice point you brought. And we need to understand that intention begins in heart, just like the faith resides in heart. So there's a hadith of Prophet, peace be upon him, where he said, beware, there is a piece of flesh in the body if it becomes good, the whole body becomes good. But if it gets spoiled, the whole body gets spoiled. And that is the heart. Yes. And uh, in another place, uh, he mentioned that, weirdly, Allah does not look at your appearance or your wealth, but rather he looks at your hearts and your actions. Now, this is a very important hadith because it shows us that we will only be judged by things that we are capable of steering controlling and managing of course with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes so in terms of our looks that's given by God Almighty in terms of money okay it's given by God Almighty mm. but what we can change is like you said intentions what's in our heart and uh, you know that is the the, the the winning formula this brings me Muhammad to another very uh, profound uh, uh, hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <clears throat> where Anas bin Malik reported that the Messenger of Allah, subha- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, of the Messenger, peace be upon him, said, three things follow a dead, a dead man. Mm-hmm. Two of them come back and one is left with him. Yeah. The members of his family and his wealth uh, uh, and, his, and his good deeds. Mm-hmm. These are the three things. Mm-hmm. The members of his family and his wealth come back mm-hmm. and the deeds alone are left with him. Subhanallah. Amazing. So no matter what we accumulate in this world, Mm -hmm. no matter how many family members we have, uh, at the end of the day, when the day comes and we depart and we go back to Allah subhanahu wa Mm ta'ala, the only thing that we'll take with us is our deeds. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Same. uh, This is wonderful. It connects perfectly with the the earlier hadith where it says, Worldly Allah does not look at your appearance or your wealth but he rather looks at your hearts and your actions. So hearts meaning your intentions are correct and actions meaning your actions are as per the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. And uh, there's another very nice hadith, the faith of a servant is not upright until his heart is upright. And his heart is not upright until his tongue is upright. A man will not enter paradise if his neighbor is not secure from his evil. So from here we see that initial hadith we looked at the where what we call internal reflections or self-development or self-improvement and now it's tr- trying it up to others because how good we are internally will impact the people around us and when we talk about neighbors for me it as an individual it could be my neighbors as a nation it could be other countries around uh, us as well there is, there is another hadith uh, where abu huraira reported uh, from the messenger peace be upon him saying mm-hmm. Look at those who stand at a lower level than you, Mm -hmm. but don't look at those who stand at a higher level than you, Mm -hmm. for this would make the favor conveyed upon you by Allah insignificant Mm -hmm. in your eyes. Exactly. And this brings us to the calamities that we have today. In gratitude, yeah. uh, How to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For a person who loses his business, 
he should not see that uh, he still he has not, his health he should not see to the pers- uh, he should not look at the person who who still has a running business mm-hmm. he should look at the people who lost their kids who the people who were infected by the virus mm-hmm. and so on mm-hmm. the people who are working at home and can't go out mm-hmm. they should not complain that they cannot go out because some people don't have homes mm-hmm. they are exposed on the streets like the homeless yeah. and they are exposed to the virus they are wishing and begging to have a home that a comfortable home like the one you have really so do not complain that you're eating the same food today because all restaurants are closed mm-hmm. think of those who don't have even that food that you have on your table every single day mm-hmm. yeah exactly see again dealing with uh, self enhancement and how it reflects upon uh, us uh, on the people around us i should say or the creation around us including environment and animals and plants there's a hadith where it says the best of jihad is that man strives against his soul and his desires of course here it refers because every nafs or every soul there is khair in it and shar in it there is good and there is evil yes so we need to make continuous effort where we feed the good side of our souls by doing good deeds by doing uh, you know a religious ritual by surrounding ourselves with good people and you know reading about Quran and sunnah and, and then uh, advising others to do good as well and you know have a society wide impact so we're not the only one standing and we get weak and we also get washed away when the flood comes you know and the the other thing is in terms of <coughs> desires also is when we have evil desires that's what it's it's referring to in a, in other hadith it says whoever would love to be delivered from hellfire and admitted into paradise let him meet his end with faith in Allah and the last day and let him treat people as he would love to be treated mashallah Muhammad I have also a uh, another hadith where it is narrated by Abu Huraira mm-hmm. uh, that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him so says awesome. the servant speaks words that he does not understand mm-hmm. its pr- repercussions but he sinks down in hellfire further than the distance between east and west Great. and this brings us to the idea of you know people who th- who speak out and say uh, things that hurt others without thinking of the repercussions you know we are accountable for every single word mm-hmm. that we say exactly. sometimes it takes us uh, years to build a relationship but it takes only one word to break that relationship exactly. so exactly. make sure that you think twice and thrice before you say anything to anyone mm-hmm. because when the word goes out guess what it you doesn't can't come recall back. it yeah. yeah and the other thing is some people they would talk about topics which don't concern them yes and they have absolute no knowledge about it but they they still want to be the chief and they will just say anything to get attention and we see a lot of those uh, uh, self proclaimed pundits on the media uh, you know uh, again uh, one of the things that since you mentioned about this there's another hadith where it says uh, the best muslim is the one who avoids harming other muslims with his tongue and hands so here in civilized society obviously we don't see uh, you know people harming each other with hands per se it's happening in a lot of uh, places in the world but as far as the the tongue is concerned we have to be very careful because when we uh, hear this hadith we think of like i'm going to stand and curse you or something like that or yes. get angry at you but they are now because of the advancements in social media the repercussions are more severe uh, i don't have to say anything on your face i can just go and type something on social media mm-hmm. and it'll be broadcasted to different platforms and then it'll be picked up from there by others and they'll share it and they'll spread it around so the impact would be quicker and it would be more dreadful than me just saying something to you in anger and then later saying i'm really sorry about that and the next hadith that i have uh, muhammad it is narrated by anas ibn malik that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says none of you will have faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself yeah. and this is a very good hadith and uh, i would like to share mm-hmm. what i saw a uh, day before yesterday i went uh, to uh, my parents house and on my way back to my house I noticed a lot of people gathering so I I I felt curiosity and I wanted to find out what's going on 
and I found uh, three to four women. Uh, they parked their cars, uh, four-wheel drives, and uh, they were distributing food packs. Wow, mashallah. They And, I, and I, I had to stop and go and ask them and talk to them because to me, this is faith. Mm -hmm. This is loving your brothers who are, you know, uh, less fortunate in these difficult moments. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, what are you doing? And they said, uh, one of them, uh, she told me, from the beginning, from the first day of Ramadan, we realize that it's going to be difficult for a lot of uh, uh, our brothers who are workers and laborers who lost their businesses mm -hmm. and they will not be able to have food. So every single day we prepare 400 packs of food. Wow, mashallah. Which has dates, uh, water, uh, laban and biryani mm -hmm. uh, every single day. Just mm -hmm. imagine Muhammad, yani single effort uh, of these sisters at home cooking food for 400 people every single day. Mashallah. And nobody is paying them. Nobody has asked them to do that. They are sitting in the comfort of their home. They decided, no, we want to feed people because it is part of our faith. And this is what we're talking about. Amazing. This is true love. Amazing. And they're not seeking publicity. They're just, just offering this on the side of the road. Uh, yeah, this is very heartwarming. We have a lot of stories like um, I, I mentioned my friend and um, you know his circle of volunteers. They are doing a lot of uh, these buying groceries for the people who've lost their jobs and you know they don't have any money. And I was speaking to him the other day and he said that uh, he has spoken to a few restaurants where the restaurants have agreed that they will give free food to the deserving people uh, if he can facilitate the delivery. So there are people out there with kind hearts and uh, Allah has, uh, you know, uh, given them the light where they are doing these things quietly uh, without making any noise. Um, Muhammad, this brings me to the next hadith <coughs> where the Prophet ﷺ uh, said, and this hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. Mm -hmm. He says, what I have prohibited you, uh, sorry, what I have prohibited for you, mm -hmm. avoid it. Mm -hmm. What I have commanded you, do it as much as you can. Right. Verily, those before you were ruined only due to their excessive questioning and contra contradicting their prophets. Subhanallah. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ is talking about the previous nations mm -hmm. and how they were excessively questioning the orders and the commands of their prophets. Mm -hmm. And they were contradicting. When the prophet says, do this, they do the, the opposite. Mm -hmm. And if we follow their footsteps, we are going to be in calamity as well. Because as you said in the beginning, that all prophets do not speak out of themselves. Mm -hmm. They are uh, a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is an inspiration from Allah mm -hmm. for them to say what they say. These teachings, what they teach us, is a practical example of the uh, the the uh, the words of Allah mm -hmm. in our scriptures. Exactly. So whatever they tell us to do, it is for our own good. Yeah. Do not challenge it. Do not you know think that it is not important. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a trend out there today. People saying, you know what, I'm not going to do this because it's a sunnah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a prophetic tradition. It's not important. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't important, the Prophet, peace be upon him, wouldn't have commanded us in the first exactly. place to do it. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty short-sightedness when people say statements like these. I mean, think about it. In, in Quran, it's mentioned how to do ablution, but how we, we do the salah, that was taught to us by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if they're going to say, you know, we're just going to follow Quran and we're not going to worry about sunnah, then a lot of their things... They, they will get invalidated, even their, uh, even their nikah. Yes. Right? So the thing is, uh, we, we should have the attitude of samana watana, like we heard and we obliged. Be obedient and humble and, and not become arrogant and, you know, act as experts and start questioning, you know, these things. So in terms of uh, mercy, which is a hallmark of Islam, we see there's a number of hadiths like, uh, Prophet peace be upon him, he said, the merciful will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Okay, Be merciful to those on earth and the one in the heavens will have mercy upon you. Yes. In another place he said, I was not sent to invoke curses, but rather I was only sent as mercy. And his one of his titles is Rahmatul Alameen, mercy for the whole mankind. 
and it says another where now we are getting deep into hukukul ibad or you know the rights of the humans Be- uh, before you get into that muhammad mm-hmm. i would like to mention another uh, hadith mm-hmm. of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he says verily mm-hmm. from the perfection of islam is that a person leaves what does not concern him yes very nice and uh, this is uh, with social media today muhammad mm-hmm. this is the trend everybody wants to get in someone else's business mm-hmm. you know um, we used to hear this uh, statement before mind your business yeah yeah a lot <laughs> we used to hear especially from our parents generation mm-hmm. mind your business mind your business mm-hmm. and this is a very good uh, thing to do is when you mind your own business because your business is the one that will get you into hell or heaven so your business is far more important mm-hmm. than other people's business exactly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment he's not going to ask you about other people's business He is only going to a- ask you about your business. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to advise someone, you see someone doing something wrong, go in private and talk to them nicely and tell them, "Oh brother, mm-hmm. I am here to come and advise you in a certain matter." Yeah. But don't get into the affair of affair of, of, of people and talk about people in public and humiliate humiliate people mm-hmm. and and uh, you Especially know Especially on social and media. slander people, yeah. you know, just because you're sitting Uh, in front of a screen mm-hmm. uh, be- behind the scenes and nobody knows who you are mm-hmm. it doesn't give you the right to say or or slander or get into people's uh, business mm-hmm. and it becomes it became very normal now with a lot of uh, young people and we're not generalizing again and not only general uh, or not only young people even the adults they you know they would see something they don't like and immediately they'll have an they opinion attack, about it they will have an opinion you have to keep your opinion to yourself you you see something you don't like in someone you don't have to say it in public if you're man enough you're strong enough go and tell him in private that i didn't like what you said yeah. but you acting in here a hero and publishing your opinions about him in public that's not part of our faith mm-hmm. that's not part of our morals that's not part of our upbringing that's not even part of our tradition exactly there's a very popular saying that stop making stupid people famous so if somebody does something ridiculous and then you start sharing that on social media and talking to your friends about it you're going to give them their 5 minutes of faith so well, deprive them of their 5 well, minutes Muhammad, of faith well muhammad we haven't stopped uh, stupid people from being famous but corona did <laughs> yeah <laughs> one of the things the blessings of corona i say alhamdulillah a lot of these clowns who are you know uh, think they're celebrities out there and i'm not generalizing again here i'm mm-hmm. just saying the people who don't have content who are only uh, you know into advertising food and products and and nonsense and wasting people's time um they've gone you know they disappeared you know because all the markets are closed all the restaurants are closed uh, nobody else you know you see them you can actually see them on social media begging trying to find people to talk to and you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know got rid of them alhamdulillah mm-hmm. and we we now we get to see uh, people on social media who are giving classes who are giving lessons something productive giving knowledge yeah and it's something positive. very very positive and yeah. productive exactly. instead of the nonsense we used to to see exactly so uh, going in line with what you say there's a hadith that says the believer does not insult others does not curse others is not vulgar and is not shameless okay another place he said best of you are those who are the best to your families and in another variation it says the best of you are those who are best to you or wives so this is the part of mercy and character building which is injected by the teachings of islam and since we are social beings and we coexist we're supposed to coexist in peace uh, one of the most challenging issues facing uh most of the world even today is racism mm. okay and here prophet Muhammad, peace <coughs> be upon him addressed it by saying oh people your lord is one and your father adam peace be upon him is one there is no favor of an arab over a foreigner nor a foreigner over an arab and neither a white skin over a black skin nor a black skin over white skin except by righteousness okay now this is very powerful because righteousness again brings us back to 
uh, intention and deeds. Okay, so one is in the heart and the other one we can see people doing it. So this this is a very powerful message and if other nations also listen to it and adopt it, a lot of the problems will go away. I know some nations are trying very hard to make new laws and trying to implement those laws. But again, if they uh, cater more towards the hearts and minds of the masses, it'll be more productive than implementing the laws. And This and less expensive also this brings me you know to the idea of racism Muhammad. in mm-hmm. the past uh, uh, few weeks we have uh, witnessed uh, the truth about a lot of people mm-hmm. when it comes to racism especially in uh, in crisis mm-hmm. where i i watched videos uh, from some uh, asian countries where they were stopping africans uh, entering into malls and this they only people uh, you know uh, allowed to get into malls are their own people their citizens okay but the people who are from a different race uh, especially africans they're not allowed and and so on and then i watched another video where they have these domestic workers out on the streets sleeping on the streets because they are afraid uh, of the infection and they don't have a place to keep them and they are just sleeping on the streets with no food or shelter mm-hmm. which is something very degrading and it is not humane it is not islamic and it doesn't represent us mm-hmm. and i urge the people who of intellect in these societies to say something about it mm-hmm. you know to stand to to be just mm-hmm. no matter what trouble you will get into exactly but if you see something wrong the prophet sallallahu so alaihi wasallam so. says whoever sees something wrong or injustice mm-hmm. he should he should change it with his hand exactly if he's not able to change it with his hand he should change it with his words mm-hmm. if if he is not able to change it with his words he he should at least you know uh, hate that act in his in heart, his heart. Yeah. and this is the least level of faith a believer should have mm-hmm. exactly no i agree with that and unfortunately there's a lot of people uh who are very arrogant you know mostly because they have more more money or there could be other reasons as well but money being the one of the top reasons and there's a couple of hadith about this fact where it says no one uh who has the weight of a seed of arrogance in his heart will enter paradise Now, this is a general statement it doesn't say about muslims or you know not yet muslims or whatever but this is the level of damage that arrogance can cause in 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 our hearts uh another place it says verily allah is beautiful and he loves beauty arrogance means rejecting the truth and looking down upon people so if you're wearing nice clothes you're driving a nice car you're living clean and all that that's fine there's nothing wrong with it you know your standard of living should reflect your status what if allah has blessed you with uh with uh, sustenance it should reflect upon you and of course you should share with others also but this is what it's saying and rejecting truth is now this is something which is very common nowadays and we don't even recognize it like mm-hmm. like you said even if you uh talk to somebody even in private that brother i think you know what you're doing it would be better if you do this or this instead of this and immediately uh, in a lot of cases you'll see a backlash like you know who made you an expert or wh- who made you a saint or what do you mean i'm wrong what's wrong why are you saying may god give you guidance no, okay uh, you think i'm misguided the, the first thing they tell you mind your own business exactly exactly so uh, even though you mean uh, well for them in your heart so my request to everybody out there is yes we are all very uh, in the front driving seat when it comes to giving guidance but let's look at the other side of the coin when we receive guidance and this is for everybody including myself mm. how do i react do i even listen to what the other person is saying and do i respond do i react my, and and why so my father has uh, a saying muhammad he used to tell us when we were younger growing up mm-hmm. he used to say the person who comes and tells you your shortfalls is the person who loves you mm-hmm. because you might have a lot of friend and they see you doing wrong things and they encourage you to continue or they would or they just keep quiet they don't say anything but the person who really likes you and loves you mm-hmm. and cares about your well-being will come and approach you and will say muhammad you are my dear brother you are a very good person 
but I've noticed you've done su- certain mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. that will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. And you, as a good believer, you should accept advice from those who love you. And, and thank you for their you. advice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I think you did a program on a, a believer is like a mirror. Or yes. There's a hadith, yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, the hadith says, uh, mm-hmm. A believer is a mirror of his brother. Mm. So we should reflect our brothers and, and sisters. If you see something in them, you go and approach them because you love them. Yeah. Not because you want to make a scene, not because you want to humiliate them, yeah. not because you want to, sc- to, to, to spread scandal. Yeah. No, you want what is good for them. And you're only doing it because you love them and you, you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. So, you know, focusing on the mirror part, Mirror shows you the good things about you as well as the things that need improvement. It tells you the truth, right? So this is, uh, again, this uh, clicks with the uh, part of giving guidance, uh, sorry, giving advice and taking advice that we should have a balanced approach. Yes. Uh, next, we'll briefly look at uh, the financial side of things because when we deal with each other, uh, a lot of the things are contracts whether it's a wedding contract, it's uh, I'm going to a university, there's a contract, I will pay them, they will give me education and a degree, uh, it is financial a, contract. You whether know. it is a written contract or a verbal contract. Yeah. Okay. So here it's uh, when we look at the uh, the financial side, it says, one of the hadith says that the best charity is that which is practiced by a wealthy person and start giving first to your dependents. Hmm. And this is a very powerful thing because a lot of us are not on the same page with our family members and and you know often we say i'll go i go out and help anybody in the world except for you yeah, yeah? so this is uh, where it's telling us to curb our emotions and despite the fact that it might not be very easy but we need you know they say charity begins at home Definitely. so our dependents we need to take care of them and even family members that might not be very nice to us we still need to kind of sort of give them preference you know Another hadith, it says, the best among you is he who pays his debt in the most handsome manner. So for my brothers and sisters out there who owe money, if you have it, please return it as soon as you can. If you don't have the intention and you're going to make COVID-19 as an excuse and all that, guess what? Allah will keep on giving you excuses and God forbids you'll die in debt. Yesterday, I received a message from someone and they were asking about giving out charity Mm -hmm. and the person says that uh, you know i have a debt to someone and uh, i want to i haven't paid yet but i want to give out charity because of these uh, circumstances that we're in Mm -hmm. and i said to him uh, is the debt due you must have you know a time period agreed on agreed on when did you agree to pay back if it is due or overdue then the priority is to pay the person's mm-hmm. debt, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, if you want to pay our charity, go and ask the permission from this person that you know what, you know, uh, I know your debt is due, but mm-hmm. do you allow me to pay our charity? Because it is not, it is not your right. No longer, it is no longer your right. It is the right of someone else now because that money is supposed to go to the person who you owe money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so don't go and do charity while you owe people money. Yeah. You know, finish your obligation exactly. first and then uh, go and do uh, charity and, and other things. I, I want to add something to where you said finish your obligations first and then do something else. A lot of us, we go for Umrah every year, mm-hmm. but we haven't done Hajj. Even though Hajj is Fard and Umrah is Sunnah. Yes. Okay. And, a lot even, of and, us and, and even though we afford to go for yeah, to Hajj, we have exactly. the time, we have the money, we have the physical capability, yes. but we think that, no, we're not ready. Yeah. We're waiting Allah to call us. Yeah. And uh, the other thing you see is a lot of people do Sadaqah, but they don't calculate Zakah. Zakah so is Fard. Sadaqah is a charity, yeah. is a voluntary charity, and which is uh, not an obligation. Yeah. And Zakat is mandatory. Yes. So that's what I'm saying that just we need to understand take how many your, take your priorities right. Yeah, exactly. How many or the ways, people who want to pray taraweeh and they don't pray the five daily prayers. Yeah. Yeah. They'll stay up all night. Or we are worshiping in the nights of Ramadan and before Fajr they'll fall asleep. Yeah. So just look at the different traps of shaitan. Don't fall for them. Yes. Okay. So here again, 
there's uh, there's another hadith where Prophet peace be upon him basically I'm paraphrasing that he said the best Islam is to feed the hungry and to greet with peace those you know and those you do not know meaning saying salam alaikum and uh, there's another hadith where he said whoever has uh, you know uh, three qualities with him uh, has completed his faith fairness for yourself to others offering peace to the world and spending in charity even when you are poor yes in terms of unity uh, you know prophet peace be upon him he said make things easy and do not make things difficult give glad tidings and do not repel people cooperate with each other and do not become divided this is amazing because a lot of people including muslims have this perception that the deen of islam has to be very difficult and very hard, complicated very complicated very yeah we need some you know we have to do this and this to be successful it cannot be that easy you know yes. but we need to avoid falling uh, falling into into this trap and uh, you know the other thing like you you mentioned i think in one of the other episodes before is uh, that a servant does not cover the faults of another servant in the world but that allah will cover his faults on the day of resurrection now this is teachings how we need to deal with with other human beings and unfortunately a lot of us we fall into this trap and we take their faults and we propagate them on social media and other ways because uh, prophet peace be upon him he said the parable of the believers in their affection mercy and compassion for each other is that of a body when any limb aches the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever okay and then you know he's he's gone towards uh, patience and modesty and gratitude like in terms of patience uh, peace be upon him he said there is no gift that is better and more comprehensive than patience okay uh, modesty he said modesty does not bring anything but goodness okay in terms of gratitude he said he has not thanked allah who has not thanked people now we need to reflect how many of us thank people around us and how many times do we thank them and do we really mean it or it's just words and and today muhammad let us take this opportunity mm-hmm. to thank all our medical teams exactly around the globe exactly. who are spending day and night uh you know uh endangering their own lives exactly yeah. uh to save our lives and to to make uh, a difference in this world mm-hmm. uh, we salute them for their their he- heroism mm-hmm. and we salute also our uh, police and uh, the service uh, employees in the government and the people who are uh, you know um jeopardizing their lives to go to the lockdown areas like matrah mm-hmm. uh, sending food and charity exactly, and supplies yes. to the people and these are all volunteers mm-hmm. so we say barakallahu feekum mm-hmm. and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for every single action that you do and especially the medical team may allah reward you for every single life that you're trying to save yes because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know uh, appreciates every single life that is saved exactly you know so it's a very uh, great deed a person would do mm-hmm. so feeding people uh, protecting people teaching people and curing people these are very very sacred to allah subhanahu mm-hmm. wa ta'ala exactly yeah uh, see the f- essentials or the first line of defense these are the real heroes and they have shown in times of trouble that they they deserve to be heroes and what we can say to them is that look we can only thank you uh, but allah is the one who will reward you yes okay and uh, as a final thought uh, there's a very nice hadith it's good news and a warning also it's a very balanced hadith uh, which goes you must enjoin the good and you must forbid the evil or allah will make sovereign over you the worst of you you will who will afflict you with the worst of punishment then the best of you will make dua that is supplicate and it will not be answered yes. so our request to everybody out there is uh, account to yourself because you are called to be accounted because you still have time and this will not be the same forever and i also would like to end uh, with a hadith that is applicable to the conditions that we're going through at the moment mm-hmm. 
where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will read it out in Arabic first. Mm-hmm. He says, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرُهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَاكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءَ شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ذَرَّاءَ صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ mm-hmm. Strange are the ways of a believer, for there is good in every affair of his. And this is not the case with anyone else except in the case of a believer. Mm-hmm. For if he has an occasion to feel delight, he thanks God. Thus there is a good for him in it. And if he gets into trouble and shows uh, resignation and endures it patiently, mm-hmm. there is a good for him in it. So, and shukar. so we should be thankful mm-hmm. and should be grateful at the same time in difficult moments everything that happens to us it happens for a reason mm-hmm. and even if we don't know the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these things to happen they happen for a good thing we just have to be patient and allah will protect us and bless us in our life Amen. I think we come to the end of the show today. Muhammad, thank you very much for sharing uh, these hadith and thank you to all our listening listeners for being with us on the show. See you next uh, episode, inshallah, from me, Hatab al-Absalam and engineer Muhammad Farooq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa